as a reminder, the sum method, we used a scanner. Um, this was like our example first loop algorithm where we prompt the user for a positive integer. We read in that integer. If it wasn't equal to negative one, we added it to the sum and we kept doing this until as long as the value wasn't equal to negative one. Okay. I think this is the best way to write this method. Okay. Um, that said, um, there are other ways we could do this, one of which uses this new keyword break. Okay. So let's let's actually copy this whole method because I want to basically use it and just change one aspect of it. So I'm going to copy the whole method and I'm going to name it sum with break. So it has a different name. I'm going to get rid of some of the comments just to make it a little bit more concise since they're up above anyway. And I'm gonna get rid of the if statement we had and just have the sum here instead. All right, because I wanna show a different approach we could, we could take. As I said, I think checking if the value is negative one and only if it's not adding value to sum is the better approach here. But sometimes in the middle of a loop, we detect some sort of a condition and we want the loop just to end right now immediately, okay? Um, often that will happen in a more sophisticated loop where there's a lot of other stuff going on and a lot of code, and it's not necessarily as clear to use a big if else type thing. Um, but we'll, we'll see. So here's, here's an alternative approach. We'll go with that. So what we could do here is instead of conditionally adding value to sum, we could check for the condition that should end our loop early, earlier than expected and immediately. So we could actually check. We could say if value equals negative one, if this occurs, we don't want the loop to keep running. We want the loop to end like right now before this line of code executes. And the way we can specify that is with the keyword break. That's our first of two new keywords. What break does is break immediately exits the innermost loop. Here we only have one loop, but if we had nested loops, it exits the innermost loop based on where it's positioned. So if value was to equal negative one, this break statement would be executed and the Java runtime, the next line of code the Java runtime executes would be return sum. It skips over everything else inside of the loop, doesn't check the condition, doesn't run that code, immediately goes to the next line of code following the loop. That's what makes it powerful. It allows us to change the flow of execution within a loop. That's also what makes it potentially confusing. Loops are confusing enough in terms of their flow of execution. Now with this break statement, there are two ways that we can end a loop. One way is the normal loop condition like we're accustomed to, but now we have a second way that makes the loop end right away. That can be confusing to people reading your code or it can be confusing to you when you write the code. So my advice is use break judiciously, only use it if you think it makes the code easier to read and understand. Probably some sort of an if statement is going to be a better approach, but I want you to be aware of this keyword. Questions about break? All right, let's look at a different thing that we might want to do. So I'm going to go back here to sum again. I'm going to copy scum. I'm going to copy sum a second time, and I'll paste to that near the end here. And I'm going to call it sum with continue. I 
I think this is a little bit more reasonable of an example. Um, so again, I'm gonna get rid of some of these comments just to make it a little bit more concise. All right, so here's the sum method working correctly. The way our program is written right now, it's not very forgiving to the user. We ask the user to enter a positive integer, but let's say they get confused and they type koala instead, okay? Um, if we were to call the next int method on the scanner and what the user typed was a word instead of an integer, we would get an exception and our program would crash, okay? So that's not very user friendly. So we can make our programs more accessible and forgiving by giving the user multiple chances to actually do what we ask them to do, okay? Um, and we're gonna see a new method on the scanner class that helps us do that. So let's write a conditional, let's write an if statement here. And we're gonna use s, the variable that references our scanner. And the new method we're gonna call is has next int. And if has next int returns false, we're gonna do something different. All right, so let's, before we talk about what we're gonna do, let's talk about this new has next int method, okay? The has next int method of the scanner class returns true if the next token <coughs> to be read is an integer. Otherwise, it returns false. Okay. Here's the key behavior that's important. It does not consume the next token. And if there are no tokens in the stream, in the stream, it waits until there are. Think of the has next int method as a way to peek at what the user has typed without actually reading it. Because once we read it, it's like out of the stream, it's gone. And if it's not what we expect, we get an exception and our program crashes. Has next in, and there's also like has next double and has next boolean. There's a has next for anything. There's just a has next, like, is it a string? Um, let's us basically peek at the user input, ask a question about it, but leave it there to be read later, okay? So we basically can be like, hey, we asked the user for an integer. Let's peek and see if they typed in an integer. If they didn't, Let's print an error message and prompt them to try again, okay? So that's what we can do inside this if statement. We can say, first let's give them a report. So we're gonna say system.out.println. We're gonna nicely say, and I'm gonna quote whatever they typed in, I'm gonna put in quotes so they know what it is. Um, in order to print a double quote, I have to escape it with a backslash. So that prints a double quote. And then I'll concatenate s.next, which will read in whatever they typed. And then I'll have another quote for their string. And I'll say it is not an integer. Try again. There's a nice message. Now what we could do is we could put all of this code that I'm highlighting inside an else that goes with this if. So this will only run if this condition, rather if it has next int was, was true. And that would be okay, and it would be reasonable. But sometimes if like your error handling, and then you have an else, you like this code ends up indented like so far in, it can be confusing to see where it actually sits. So sometimes when we're writing error handling code like this, it's nice to use a keyword that basically says, we're gonna skip the rest of this iteration, skip all this code, check the condition, and if it's true, like just go back up to the top. And the keyword that lets us do that is called continue. So continue does two things. One, it immediately skips to the end 
of the innermost loop. And two, once it gets there, it reevaluates the loop condition and continues with the next iteration if the condition is true. Unlike the break example we wrote, I think this is actually pretty good. Um, I think this is a reasonable use of the word continue. Again, we didn't have to use it. We could have just done an if else, but this is, this is okay. So to be clear, let's say the user typed in koala. We would print this error message. The next line of code would be continue. The Java runtime would immediately jump to here, skips all of this code, jumps to here, checks if value is not equal to negative one, and then it goes back up here and prompts them to go again. One thing is, oops, what, did I not rename this? Did I copy it twice? I did, oops, sorry. Let me fix up my code here really quick. If you compile what we just typed, you get an error that says the variable value might not have been initialized. The reason for that is we declared the variable value here, but we never assigned it a value. And now that we have this if statement with this continue, this line of code might never run. And so value, when we get to here, might not have a value which isn't allowed. So we now need to actually set value equal to zero. So at least our code will compile with it being initialized. So again, continue can be helpful when used judiciously. I think it leads to more readable code. It's never needed. You can always do an if else. Um, and it can lead to confusion because we further complicated the flow of execution in a loop. Now there's a statement that basically skips the rest of the loop and jumps to reevaluate the condition again. Okay, that can be confusing. But I want you to be aware of both break and continue. <laughs>